This is easily the best feature in SharePoint Premium. Autofill is combining SharePoint with a large language model so you can save time. Let's jump into how this thing works, how to set it up, and see it in action. There are some major gotchas with this feature, so stay until the end to understand all of those things. Let's get into it. Now, what Autofill is going to do is it's going to be using a large language model to look at your content and then answer some sort of question, answer a prompt more specifically about that. Now, that could be, in our case, we're going to be finding the client name associated with a document. You could look up a whole number of things and it will work with all different types of fields. Now, there is a set amount of fields and that's here on the screen. So if you're using one of these types of fields, autofill is going to be available for you. It'll automatically know what the data type is, if it's like a, a yes, no column or something like that. And it's going to be able to set the values accordingly based on what your prompt is. Now, if that all sounds confusing, we're gonna get into this and you'll see exactly how simple this one's going to be. So the first thing we need to do, if you don't already have this enabled, is we need to go to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So let's hop over to that. From here, you're gonna to go to Setup, and then you're gonna scroll down until you find Automate Content Processes with Syntax. Now, at some point, they're going to Rename this to SharePoint Premium. I'm sure they will. It hasn't been called Syntax for a while now. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it was called uh, SharePoint Syntax and Microsoft Syntax and Project Cortex. It's had a number of different uh, rebrandings over the years. But in this case, this is what we're going to be looking for. So click on that and you'll see a button to go to the Syntax settings. So we'll click on this. Now, what you should be seeing on this screen, now, if you uh, if you don't see things the way it looks right now, you may have to click this button to uh, configure your billing. You will need to configure this to uh, connect this to a subscription so that it will be able to bill through Azure because this is consumption based uh, billing. Uh, th that that's how this particular feature and most of these things, that's how they're all going to work is as you use them, you will incur charges. So once you hook up that to Azure, you'll be able to look down here and see all of the different features. Now, for some reason, this could be a bug because this is a, a fairly new interface. Uh, it was on a, a different screen. If you look at some of my other SharePoint Premium videos, you'll see that. But there'll be a feature for uh, autofill right here. What you'll generally do is you'll click on this and with most of these, you'll be able to uh, turn this feature on or off and then configure what sites you want it to use. Now, a lot of these features actually will default to using all libraries. So in other words, anyone can turn on a feature on their particular site or library. That's really not what you want. You want to uh, because, again, this is a, a consumption-based billing product. So if you don't want to incur a lot of charges, what you want to do is click this button and then uh, s select specific site where you want to enable this at. So that's we're going to get more into kind of uh, the use cases for this type of thing. But what you'll do is at least turn this on and add a site that you want to test with. So I've already done that, and, and actually, uh, yeah, autofill is not even showing up on mine. I'm not sure. I know it's enabled because I've enabled it before. But um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's a bug that they'll eventually fix. Oh, and in case you're worried about like actually getting charged right now for even testing, there is a promo period. Uh, it, it, had, it was scheduled to expire in, I think, June of this year. Uh, the uh, Microsoft has extended this promo out until June of next year. So that's June of 2025, where you get free capacity, so free credits, basically, to use a lot of these different features. I'll have a link down in the description so you can see exactly which features are included and how many times you can use that or trigger that behavior uh, before you actually start getting charged. So uh, link uh, link is down in the description below, but let's jump over to our SharePoint site and start looking at this stuff. 
So I'm over here on my Contoso sales site. I'm in the contracts library where I've got some contracts. Now let's break down the use case for this. So the Contoso sales team wants to speed up the process of uploading all these different contracts. They upload a lot of contracts and they would want to reduce the amount of time spent filling out metadata. Sound familiar? They're on board with the idea of using AI to help, but they do want to start slow. Like most people, you don't really trust this thing until you know it's gonna work, you see it working, and you kind of prove it out. That's what all my customers are currently doing right now. They're experimenting with these types of features to see how well is it going to help them to, and then compare that to the cost. Is it is this cost effective? Uh, Syntax is all these, these SharePoint Premium and Syntax features, I keep using the word Syntax, but all these SharePoint Premium features, they, they do have tiny little costs, but generally it's it's really cheap compared to what the the sticker shock that people have been seeing with copilot for m365 for instance now totally different use case but you know compared to that this is actually going to be five cents per execution so really not too bad and great in some specific use cases like this so the first thing we're going to do is we have a just kind of a clean slate here. We've got our contracts loaded in here. So as I mentioned, we're going to add a client name field to this so that we can quickly sort these contracts out, organize them by by client name. Now, you know, the, in the past, this was all done manually. And if if you're like me, Every person you come across who's using SharePoint, they absolutely hate uh, They hate metadata. They hate setting metadata. They hate filling out all the details. Uh, the, most people still want to use folders, it seems like, and I don't know why. But we're going to be helping the sales team out with this. We're going to give them a column that's going to automatically look inside these documents, figure out who the client is, and put that in a text field. Let's jump into this thing. First, I'm gonna, let's just add this over here uh, right next to the name. We'll make a text field, we'll call this client name. It'll be a single line of text. Now here, you'll see the autofill. Because we're using a supported column type, we'll be able to see autofill, get a little information on what this is, and then we can click on setup. Now, I've got a prompt I'm going to copy in here. So this is just like if you're using ChatGPT and you're going to ask it a question or, you know, give it some sort of instruction uh, and it, with an expected result. That's exactly what we're doing here. But this prompt is going to be applied using this document. Every one of these documents is going to run each time for a particular document. And that's going to be able to give us that information. The LLM is going to use that prompt to give us the information. Here is the prompt we're going to use. Let's go over this. It says, return the name of the business or client that would, that would sign this document and receive the services described in this document. Now, it sounds a little wordy, uh, but in general, what I've been finding is that you definitely want to be extremely clear and detailed with what you're asking AI to do to get a good response. This should be quite detailed enough. If we want to test this out, we have a test option here where we can pick one of these documents and we can click test. And this is going to test the prompt on this document. So let's click this and see what the result is. Apex Solutions. Now you we probably could have guessed something along with Apex because you did see that in the file name. But you see Apex Solutions is, is actually the, the full name of the client in this. Now, these are all fictitious clients, by the way. But that's the name that I'm actually expecting. So this, this is working. This one is working great. So if I click on Save, it'll take us back to the Create a Column screen. I'll click Save again. And that's all I'll need to do. Now it adds two different fields here. You'll see the client name field, but then you'll see a processing status. Now this is also used for some of the document processing features of SharePoint Premium as well. What this is gonna do is return either in progress, finished, or failed. Uh, if there's an error with, uh, with, with reading this, because there are certain documents, uh, or there's document types that are supported and there's certain ones that aren't but you probably won't run into this much of an uh, into much of an issue with this because it does seem seem to support a lot of file types. I'll put the whole list on the screen right now. 
Now you notice we don't have any client names in here. There's no processing status. It hasn't done anything yet. And that's intentional. You will, you'll need to manually trigger this if you want this to run on a document. That way it's not just going to constantly be um, uh, running up your, your Azure bill uh, as you're changing stuff around, changing the contents of the document or metadata columns. And I think that's a great feature. So this will run when you tell it to. So we need to trigger this off. But first, if you're new to SharePoint Premium or haven't even heard of it, I've got a new that will keep you updated on all these great features. Click the link below to get signed up. It's completely free. What more could you ask for? So let's check out the, uh, let's tr uh, trigger this thing and see what it will do. So I can click on the context menu and you'll see an option here for autofill. It's that easy. You could also find the same one up here. You'll see autofill. So I'll click on this. And actually, uh, I'll just go ahead and run it for all of these. So. I'll click autofill and you see uh, the saw that message. It was being processed. So now uh, we, what do you know? It's already done. It says, it says in progress right here. Maybe that hasn't updated yet, but it definitely is, uh, is already identifying the right information. And I'm just kind of scanning through here. Uh, yeah, this says new service agreement, but then the client name is ascend analytics. So let's click on this and actually see, is this Ascend in Analytics? How good is this thing? There it is, Ascend Analytics. So it worked fine. Um, as you saw, it definitely is not even based on the file name itself. It's really looking inside these documents to come up with these features. And if we refresh this one more time, well, it's still showing in progress. At some point, it'll go to finished. So as I mentioned, the autofill is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It won't work with every column type, though. There are a certain number of, of types that it'll work with. That's probably going to change over time as they work on the integration between SharePoint and the LLMs uh, to, to improve the quality of that connection. The other thing to really mention is that this is going to be billing as we use this. So this was four executions. Actually, it's probably going to be five uh, considering the test that we did. So this is going to definitely have a cost associated with using autofill like most of these SharePoint premium features. But the cost savings is going to be in the the productivity gains that users have. In this case, we don't have to fill out the client name. Now imagine every, uh, you have um, 10 different columns in this library and they're all going to be using autofill prompts. That's going to be a, a very fast process for the sales team to upload documents, uh, highlight it, pick autofill, and then just leave. Now, they'll need to come back, honestly. Uh, this is AI. We, we can't 100% trust AI results ever. So they do need to come back at some point and visually verify, yes, everything here looks fine. That's always going to be the case, no matter what sort of AI you're using, even if it's Microsoft Copilot, any of the thousand Copilots we have out there, you'll always need to review the results of this to make sure it's correct. But... It's going to be a tremendous time saver, and it's going to be something you will want to use in specific business use cases, something along like this, where it's really about saving users time. Now, you can, and you can ask all sorts of things in that prompt, so it's not just necessarily extracting verbatim text. You can get this to summarize a document. You can do all sorts of things. Think about what, you're, what people are using ChatGPT for or uh, Microsoft Copilot. They're, they're asking all sorts of information to uh, and using that LLM to get deep understanding of the content and then extracting uh, an, an analysis of it or a summary, uh, specific details, things like that to surface content right here at the library level without having to actually go into that library. It is, an, it is really, really cool to see. And we're going to continue to get a lot of AI features here in SharePoint. Now, autofill is really similar to another SharePoint premium feature that works on images. I made a video about that as well. So click or tap the screen to check it out and I will see you in the next one.